Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the esoteric teaching community. Today's selection is an essay entitled, Krishna Speaks to Save His Devotee. The second chapter of Bhagavad Gita begins with the following sloka. Sanjayu uvacha tam tata kripaya vishtam ashru purna kulekshanam vishidantam idam vakyam uvacha madhusudanaha. Sanjaya said, Seeing Arjuna full of compassion and very sorrowful, his eyes brimming with tears, Madhusudana, Krishna, spoke the following words, Bhagavad Gita 2.1. Krishna is described here as Madhu Sudana, the killer of the Madhu demon. Why? Arjuna was attacked by a demon of forgetting his duty, by being too much attached and afflicted by bodily relationships. So by calling the Lord by his name Madhu Sudana, the compiler of Bhagavad Gita, Srila Vyasadeva, invokes the aspect of the Lord who kills the demons that harass his devotees. This is also our position. In this material world, we are so much attached to bodily relationships that it is just like we are attacked by a demon or haunted by a ghost. In a beautiful Bengali poem written by the great enigmatic master teacher Jagadananda Pandit, it is said, Pisachi pile jena mati chana hai, maya grasta jiver haya se bhava udai. When a living entity is conditioned by material nature, he is exactly like a person haunted by a ghost. Prema vivarta 1. Maya grasta jiver hai. Maya means illusion, hallucination. So we are in this material world all illusioned. Illusioned means accepting something as a fact, which is not a fact. Just like in a dream, we see sometimes that we are attacked by a tiger or chased by a demon. So many illusory things. Actually, there is no tiger, no demon is chasing, but still we're crying, help, help, ah, waking up with our heart pounding, sweating. The dream was not real, but the effect was. So our attachment for this material world is like that. It's an illusion. We're thinking that without me, everything will be spoiled. My presence is required, and so on and so forth. Just like our esteemed political leaders, each and every one of them thinks that without him, the whole situation will be spoiled. So they did not retire from political life, even up to the time of death. The attachment is so strong. But even after passing away of so many big, big leaders, the world is going on. There is a Bengali proverb that when the king dies, it does not mean the kingdom stops. Everyone is replaceable, and life and the kingdom go on. But the leader or the person in charge remains in illusion, thinking that without me, everything will be spoiled. This is called maya, illusion, and it is the cause of our attachment to this world. According to the Vedic system, therefore, there is forced renunciation. Nobody wants to retire from family life, but the Vedic injunction is that after one has passed 50 years of age, he must leave family life. It is stated in the Vedas, Pancha Sordvam Vanang Brajet, after the age of 50, one must go to the forest. The Vedic social system is designed to train people in renunciation of material attachment. Without this training, it is very difficult to give up the attachment to material enjoyment, even if one is convinced that it is illusory. In the beginning of life, as a celibate student or brahmachari, 
From the age of five, one is trained in undergoing severe austerities and penances and taking instruction from the spiritual master about the temporary existence of this material world. This system trains men in Vedic culture to expect renunciation as a normal condition of life. And even after this training, if he appears to be attached to this material world, he is allowed to go home and marry. The brahmacharis who do not fall down are allowed to remain Naishtika brahmachari without going home. They remain in the temple. They do not accept a wife. But one who must have sex life is allowed to accept a wife and become a householder for 25 years. Generally, the brahmacharis who fall down go home at the age of 24 or 25 years. After marriage, they may get children. So living in householder life for 25 years, the children are grown up, then the husband and wife take leave of the household, and this is called vanaprastha, traveling in pilgrimages to holy places like Vrindavan, Prayag, Mayapur, and so on. That was the system. After two months on pilgrimage, they come back and remain home for another two months. Then again they go out on pilgrimage. In this way, the whole process of Vedic social life trains people how to give up attachment to family life, attachment to the world. And when one is trained up fully, he takes sannyas, the renounced order of life. Then there is no more contact with woman or household life. He remains in the ashram, where his whole energy is focused on how to attain spiritual liberation. This is our Vedic system. Why? The attachment to this material body and material world is very strong. That is stated in the esoteric teaching by Rishabdhev. Pungsang striya mituni bhavame tam, tayor mito hridaya grantimahu, ato grahakshetra sutapta vitayar, janasya mohoya mahangameti. The attachment between male and female is the basic principle of material existence. On the basis of this misconception, which ties together the hearts of the male and female, one becomes attracted to his body, home, property, children, relatives, and wealth. In this way, one increases life's illusions and thinks in terms of I and mine. Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.8 this whole material world is an attachment of male and female. Pumsa striya mituni bhavam, sex impulse, sex attachment. Tayor mito hridaya grantim ahuhu. And when they are married, when they are united, it becomes a hard knot in the heart. Ato grihakshetra sutapta vitair janasya moho yamahangma Then gradually after being united, one becomes attached to griha, home or apartment, kshetra, the land or country of residence, and so on. Formerly there was no industry, so everyone must have some land to produce food. Griha, kshetra means home and land. Sutta, then sons and children. Apta, friends. Vita, then money, because without money nothing can be maintained. Ata griha kshetra supatva vitair janasya mohaha. He becomes more and more illusioned. And finally, ahang mameti. Oh, this is my country. This is my family. This is my house. My children. So on and so forth. Mama means mine. And I am this person. I am this body. This is illusion. This is maya. So Arjuna appeared to be illusioned that how shall I fight with my brothers and grandfather on the other side? He became so much illusioned. Tang tata kripaya vishtam. He became illusioned, but not without cause. He was very much compassionate, kripaya vishtam, toward his family members. And he was crying. Ashru puna kulekshanam. There were tears in his eyes. Vishidantam itam vakyam. And he was lamenting about this. How shall I fight? So Krishna then began to speak. 
Krishna saw that my friend Arjuna has become too much illusioned. He cannot do his duty. So Krishna wanted to kill the demon of illusion, and therefore he is addressed herein as Madhusudana. Krishna comes to this planet for two purposes. Paritranaya 